Today we are going to discuss a SWOT action plan, specifically developing and implementing this plan during a crisis. Typically, companies do a SWOT analysis as part of their annual strategic planning or business planning, but it can be used to address many different situations. Many people are already familiar with SWOT and running a SWOT exercise, but in case you need a refresher, let's quickly review the components of a SWOT analysis. Strengths are the advantages and positive attributes held by the company that will help achieve your objectives. Weaknesses are what will impede the company's growth or place it at a disadvantage. Both strengths and weaknesses are internal factors. They are what you and your team can completely control. The external factors that you have little control over are opportunities, which are those conditions that the company can take advantage of and use to achieve the objectives, and threats, which are the factors that could damage or stop the company from achieving the objectives. SWOT is a strategic tool, particularly right now when the world is in the middle of a pandemic crisis. Companies can use SWOT to help manage the impact on revenues or pivot in a new direction by using strengths, seizing opportunities, turning weaknesses into strengths, and mitigating threats. As an example overview of a SWOT process, we're sharing Upstart Group's experience, facilitated by our president. We broke up the process over a total of three days to avoid burnout. The first day, we focused on the SWOT analysis, using our template and brainstorming ideas for each of the four categories. We then reviewed the SWOT and, through discussion and collaboration, narrowed it down to a few items in each category. Prioritizing those items was difficult because everything felt important, and our team got stuck on several points. After discussing and sharing opinions, we came to a consensus on the priority level for each item. On day two, we tackled the SWOT action plan. With the amount of discussing and hard work and decisions we were making, the action plan ended up requiring an extra few hours on a third day. We felt we had a solid plan to meet our objectives. Each team then took their assignments, drafted more specific tactical plans in some cases, and began execution. When running a SWOT analysis, the first step is to determine your objective. For example, our objectives for our recent SWOT were to continue providing valuable support for our clients and weathering the pandemic to emerge even stronger than before. The next step is to define your team. Picking and choosing who is the best team to tackle this challenge is really important. The team can be a single department, the C-suite, managers, frontline employees, or a combination of the above. After deciding who will participate, you must choose who is in charge of facilitating your team through this process. Someone has to organize it, get the team in a room together or on a Zoom call, and support the team to talk through the real issues even when it's hard. Our pro tip is to have an objective, experienced person outside your company or team to facilitate your SWAT. You could ask your CEO coach, a colleague who's had experience in facilitating, or another trusted advisor, which will allow all team members to be able to fully participate in the exercise. An internal person can be successful, but be aware that it's a challenge to facilitate these conversations while staying neutral. Upstart Group did not use a third party when we conducted our SWAT. This meant that our president, who was facilitating, couldn't fully participate in the process, which can be an obstacle to a successful SWAT. Every SWAT, if done at a really honest level, will hit hard points in the discussion. The facilitator needs to lead the team through those conversations without influencing the team or outcomes with their own point of view. This is hard to do, which is why we recommend using an outside facilitator who can guide your team from a neutral place. In facilitating SWATs for our clients, they have reported that it's extremely helpful to have someone outside of the organization facilitate the exercise so everyone on the SWAT can participate fully. At the end of the video, we've included a link to download our free SWOT analysis template. We hope you'll use it to move your business forward. How do you draft your SWAT team? Well, that depends on your objective. If performing a SWOT analysis for your business as a whole, you need to have every area of your company represented. Your SWOT team may consist of key executives or the person or people with the best understanding and feel for the pulse in each area or department of your company. 
depending on the situation and how comfortable you are being super transparent to employees, you can choose to include your frontline customer facing staff because they often have the most amazing insight. Plus, it will help them feel trusted and an important part of the organization if you bring them in to contribute to an executive meeting. Now we're going to take a deep dive into each component of SWOT. As mentioned before, strengths already exist inside the company and SWOT helps you figure out how to capitalize on them. To find strengths, look at where your company excels. It may be people, processes, unique skills or experience, relationships with the clients, or strength of your partners. Often you can look at your best clients for clues. For our software client companies, for example, they may ask, what's their strategic advantage over the competition? Maybe it's the engineering team or patents the company holds, or it's the software team that can turn on a dime because they're hitting their development schedule right on the money. Find the strengths that already exist within your team and company, and be sure to look beyond the obvious. Remember, strengths and weaknesses are the internal factors. Weaknesses could be things such as, we don't have enough people, we don't have the right people in the right seats, we're short on budget, our product isn't as good as the competition because we're missing a few key features, Remember that looking beyond the obvious is important here too. There may be things that are viewed as an irritant that might actually be important weaknesses to identify. You'll find some strengths are also identified as weaknesses. That's okay, but if there are too many, it may mean you need to dig a little deeper. Don't worry, later in the process you explore how you can turn some of your weaknesses into strengths. Let's move on to the external factors. First up, opportunities. When we look at the pandemic, for example, you may find things that could be an opportunity and a threat. If we look at it as an opportunity, what is out there for us? How can we use our existing capabilities and strengths to respond to new needs in the market? It's possible that one of your competitors is struggling, but they have strengths that you don't, so a merger or acquisition could be a positive opportunity for both of you. Regulatory changes, environmental factors, or other changes might represent an opening for your company. Companies are finding, now that they've had to go virtual, that they're not as geographically bound from a market perspective as they might have felt previously. While it's challenging to think of opportunities if you're in a crisis, SWAT can free up your team's thinking and there are no bad ideas. That's an important facilitator tip, by the way. Setting ground rules to create safety for brainstorming is critical. If all ideas are accepted and encouraged, you'll be amazed at the creativity your team can show. The last category is threats. The best example of an external threat is the pandemic, or any other worldwide or countrywide challenge. For example, Upstart Group had a client a few years ago where 90% of their product was Chinese import. So when the US imposed higher tariffs on imported goods from China, their business model was threatened. Upstart Group helped facilitate a SWOT analysis with the objective of determining what percentage of the product manufacturing could be moved to places like Mexico or Brazil where the tariffs weren't as high. The solutions arose because the company asked themselves, how do we mitigate this threat? When looking at your company's external threats, consider asking yourselves, is it a threat? Or is it actually an opportunity? Sometimes, after mitigating a threat, you're in a better position than if you had continued with the status quo. Now that you've brainstormed items in each area of SWAT with your team and created your list for each area, what do you do with it? If you perform a SWOT analysis but don't turn it into an action plan, you'll miss the most valuable part of the exercise. We've included a link to download our free action plan template at the end of this video. Use it to help your business take flight. The first step of the action plan is to prioritize. If you have 10 to 12 things in each of those four buckets, how do you decide on the top three to five in each category that you're gonna tackle in the action plan? If you're doing the SWOT for a particular situation, like right now with the pandemic, and have a really clear objective, there will be a lot of things that naturally fall to the bottom of the list. Those items might be great ideas that you want to tackle long term, but they don't fit your current objective. 
make sure that your team works together to prioritize because unless you have an enterprise company level budget, you're not going to be able to do them all. Specify further by assigning the priority level of each of those three to five items in each of the four buckets. An item may be a showstopper, which is we have to tackle this immediately. The take care of now priority level means it needs to be tackled within the next couple of weeks or months, depending on how urgent your objective is. It could be research further, which is something you know is important, but you need more information or brainstorming to figure out how to tackle it. And plan for the future items may be next year. As your team keeps fine-tuning the action plan, some items may fall off the bottom and that's okay. Once your team has the prioritization complete for each bucket, you can now create action items for each priority. Pro tip. SWAT can be both invigorating and exhausting. Especially if your team is working remotely and you have a virtual SWAT environment, like we did, we recommend tackling the exercise and action plan development in shorter working sessions stretched over a few days to keep the energy up and the ideas flowing. Once you've identified the action items in each category, ask yourselves, what are we going to do with each action item, and who's the owner? Now the owner may not be the person who's actually going to do it, but they are responsible for making sure it gets done. Some items may take cross-functional teams to accomplish, for example, Sales may need someone from accounting, manufacturing, and marketing to accomplish their task. It could even mean partnering with or hiring an outside source or vendor. But you have to decide who's responsible for reporting back and making sure that the action item gets checked off. When you assign action items, also decide what the due dates are. Due dates can be anything from, by this time next week we're going to get to this checkpoint, to by a specific date next month, this item will be completed. And then, what are your budgets or resources? For example, I need X amount of dollars in these three people. Or, I need X amount of dollars to hire this vendor. Define whatever resources, time, treasure, talent, will be needed, and then develop a cadence for progress updates. Progress updates could start as a daily stand-up and switch to every other day in three weeks, or be weekly or even monthly if the SWAT was for strategic or longer-term planning. But since we are talking about crisis planning, somewhere from daily to weekly is more realistic. And then you, as a CEO, or your client CEO, needs to hold those action item owners accountable for progress and completion. Again. The owner may not be the one actually completing the task, but they are responsible for knowing the status of the action item and making sure it is completed by the due date. We know from experience that a SWOT analysis is a powerful tool to help build strategy and map out a plan of action to move your business forward, even during times of crisis. We encourage you to take advantage of this strategic exercise. You can learn more about SWOT analysis on the Upstart Group blog at upstartgroup.com slash blog to download our free resources and SWOT tools or schedule a facilitated SWOT with an Upstart Group facilitator, visit discover.upstartgroup.com slash SWOT.